Hey YouTube world, uh, short video again on these uh, oil lamps. I've had a few of these running in the house now. Um, we're just coming into spring here in central Pennsylvania, so I probably won't be using these too much longer, but I've just um, got done using two of these in the house all winter long. Um, if you saw my other video, uh, I recommended these because they're cheap. This was a Walmart unit for just under seven dollars. Uh, I keep two of these. I burn one in the bathroom. Um, bathroom being a moist room, we can at times have a little bit of mildew build up on the ceiling. So um, I burn one of these after in the, every evening after we have our showers and uh, keeps the bathroom nice and dry. Warms it up a touch too. Uh, also keep one burning in the living room. That way we shut all the uh, lights off in the house, save a bit of electricity. Um, believe it or not, uh, we our living room's a little smaller. We just have a smaller two-bedroom house, uh, ranch-style house, single-story house. Um, but just burning one of these in the living room will actually raise the temperature of the living room one or two degrees Fahrenheit within an hour. So uh, I know it's not a lot. I'm not saying this is going to heat your house or heat your living room but um, if you've got your thermostat set for 70 degrees Fahrenheit um, I will light this in the living room uh, when it is 70 degrees and you know seriously an hour later I go back and it's 71 to 72 degrees on the thermostat so that's just enough to stop the uh, furnace kicking on so um, it's mainly a bit of mood lighting uh, we can shut off all the other lights save a bit of electricity but it actually does kick some heat into the room uh, if you try and put your hand over the top of one of these and hold it there for very long you will soon believe that they actually do throw out some heat all right that said um, I had trouble with one of these it wasn't burning as good as the other um, so I decided to pull it apart one day and do a comp well I pulled both of them apart to do a comparison I wanted to find out why the other one had a wider if I can get my hands in here like a wider nice wide flame one of these had a narrow flame the better one had a wider flame and it was more square and it was brighter sort of a almost a yellow or a white colored flame instead of orange um, the one that this one that wasn't burning so good it also had more of a smell to it more of a kerosene or lamp oil smell which my wife didn't like at all and it used more oil than the other one so said so the other one burned hotter it burned brighter, it burned leaner and cleaner than this one. So I got sort of sick of it one day and I pulled them both apart. I pulled the uh, covers off. I've got a spare burner here. Well, I pulled the flame spreader off, both of them, to see if I could see any difference. Now, they were two different brands, so I thought, okay, one's probably just a better brand than the other, but when I pulled that flame spreader off, I did notice something. I played around and this one now is a much much better burning unit so i will pause for a second i'll get the camera set up so i can use two hands and i will uh, pull this this one apart and show you what i found and what adjustment i made okay i'm back i don't have a very good uh, cradle or stand for my cell phone to work with but i'll do the best i can and hopefully you can see what's going on here Take the burner assembly off your oil lamp. That flame spreader is a cap that's held on by two little uh, tabs that just, these two little tabs just fit through a slot and then they're bent over. So you just, it's very soft metal, so be careful. You literally bend the tab straight. You there you go and it'll pop off see here's your two little tabs and it's just very soft Chinese metal now here's what I found with the one that wasn't burning so good I don't know I'm trying to find the right angle here for you I'll try that now if you can see it if you can pick it up the wick slides up and down here. This one is quite loose. You'll see a gap 
here. The wick, if you move it this way, the wick is slopping around inside the guide. Okay, on the better one, that was burning much better, this was a much tighter fit. The guide, the wick guide, these metal plates were clamping the wick much better. That was the only difference I can see. So I started playing around with the one that wasn't burning so good. And that's what made a massive difference. Okay. Once again, this is soft Chinese metal. So I literally use my fingers to gently squash the metal down a bit. On the ends here, it's a little tighter in the middle. It's very easy, but on the ends, it's a little harder. Now, you don't want to squash it too bad. You still have to have the wick sliding up and down easily. But here's what I figured out. I'm just going to, while I'm talking to you, I'm going to keep pressing. This is what I thought anyway, and it turned out to be correct. I thought, if this is loose, all right, the wick is loose, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to let the wick suck up a lot more oil, all right? So therefore, it's going to burn more oil or kerosene. It's going to um, not burn cleanly. It's going to burn a lot more oil, therefore throwing off a smell. Just like your car or lawnmower running with a blocked air filter or if it's getting too much fuel, it'll run too rich. Okay, so what this did by squeezing this and clamping the metal around the wick more, what it did was restricted some of the oil. Obviously, the wick is still going to soak up the oil of the kerosene, but it restricted it a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it gave it by sort of flattening or pressing on the wick it spread the wick therefore spread the flame it gave me a nice uh, a wider flame and a kind of a square looking flame it uh, started using less oil um, and the smell went away I got a much brighter flame it was more to a, a, ye a bright yellow instead of a, a dark orange um, so yeah look it made a huge amount of difference huge amount of difference and that was all I could see the difference between the two different brands of oil lamps the slightly better or more expensive one had less of a gap between the wick and the guide right the wick was held more firmly in the guide instead of slopping around that's the only difference I could see so yeah that's where I started thinking if it's a loose fit, it's going to suck up more oil, throw off a smell, use more oil, not burn as efficiently. So as soon as I did that to the cheap Walmart unit, it became a much, much better oil lamp. So try that if you have an oil lamp and you're not real happy with it. If you've got any symptoms that I'm talking about, pop the cap off. I only bent one of these tabs. So now I'm going to put this back on, hook the end in that I didn't bend, put that through, Just bend the tab back down, and you're done. There you go. It's back on nice and tight, ready to go. So I just picked up this spare burner for two bucks so I could show you. So all right, that's about it for the video. Let me bring the oil lamp back. So once again, uh, these are excellent to have around the house for $7. Great if the power goes out. Some nice mood lighting. Uh, way better than candles or anything else. So uh, yeah, I still highly recommend for less than 7 bucks. Run out and get a couple. But uh, I guess you could put some kerosene or lamp oil in it and try it. If you're happy with it, great. If you think it's using a lot of oil, if you get a smell, or if you're not real happy with the flame. See, this one used to have a like a rounded 
flame. Even though the, the wick was trimmed square across, it used to get a rounded tip on it and uh, it was quite sooty and smelly. Since I squashed the wick guide and took out that play, it started burning a lot better. All right, thanks very much for watching. See ya.